So it is the last Monday of 2020 and I am so happy about it because this entire year had me looking like this, okay? Let's get into it. Give me your, give me your, give me your wig. Give me your, give me your, give me your wig. Cause it seems like you are through with it. Make sure that you're checking out patreon.com slash Adrian Expression. I'm gonna remind you each and every time you see my face, okay? <laughs> We're going to be putting up, as usual, another episode of the Expression Podcast over there on Tuesday. And you'll definitely wanna check it out because there is one specific topic in this video that I'm not gonna be able to dive into with as much depth as I want to because that YouTube don't like that type of shit. So, you know, I have a lot of flexibility on the podcast. So make sure you check it out. Let me know what you think. Well, we already know that it was beginning to look a lot like goddamn Christmas. And uh, I hope that you had a pleasant one. Let me tell you something. Since we're on the topic of Christmas, I want to know just real quick why so many people like to embarrass their kids on social media. I saw um, some parents recording their kids getting cold for Christmas, and I don't know, like, I think that some people have to really examine why they like to see their kids crying and mad and scared, and get, not only that, but then doing it for likes, you know what I mean, and retweets on social media. I think joking with your kids is one thing, but pitch like when they're too young to even understand what the hell your ass is doing and then you're putting it on social media, it's just so weird. I think some people are a little sick and sadistic and twisted and they're just like, oh well, it's just kids, it's not really that important. And uh, these kids are gonna remember what you do. And then when they grow up, you're gonna wonder why they don't wanna come around y'all. And I just think that shit is weird. I, I don't know. Like, I don't even like kids like that. I don't want any of my own, but I don't know why y'all treat them like that. Anyway, <laughs> speaking of kids, did y'all see it? And it's just real quick. We're not gonna dwell on this. Did y'all see that Nick Cannon, he had a second child, I think, with his girlfriend. Did y'all see that they named their kid Powerful Queen Cannon? <laughs> Powerful Queen, okay. And I don't mean to single out Nick Cannon or anything like that because it's a lot of celebrities that give their kids weird names. And I guess you can do that when you're rich or famous. And I'm just thinking about myself if I grew up with a name like that because it's just like, okay, so my first name is Powerful. And it's just, hey, Power. I, I, I don't know. Like, if somebody gave you the name Powerful, the middle name Queen, and then, of course, your regular ass last name, what would you do growing up with that? What would you tell people to call you? I don't know. I'd be like, y'all can call me Miss P, because bitch, can you imagine? Powerful, are you here? I don't know. Do I have a Green Lantern ring or something? <laughs> bitch, are you gonna give me Thor's hammer, bitch? Can you imagine your first name being powerful? I think it's I think it's it's like I understand the sentiment, I understand like the motive, but it's like in theory versus like in practice. It's just, <laughs> I would be like, y'all gonna have to call me Power Ranger or something. And <laughs> just, <laughs> And call it that. Anyway, I'm very happy that the baby is healthy and happy. Ah, uh, <laughs> good. Go, go, queen. Okay, so speaking of babies, all right. Iggy Azalea took to social media to tell these girls that her, I guess her baby daddy, uh, Playboy Cardi, is an absolute disaster. <laughs> it's just like. A lot of people were making fun of Iggy, and I'm doing it as well because that's just something that uh, brings me joy. But we really have to drag the hell out of Cardi. We have to drag the hell out of Playboy Cardi. As first of all, I was gonna say we have to drag him for that album, but I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. But that album was just okay. We're gonna move on. But we have to drag the hell. Iggy said that he didn't even show up to his child's birth or didn't sign a birth certificate. That's what she's saying. She's also saying that he ditched their asses uh, for his album release party. It did seem like she was more mad at the girl that he was messing with than him for a moment. So I was just like, okay. She was airing all types of shit out. And she was she's getting mad at people making fun of her and Cardi's fans or whatever, supporters. Uh, in her mansions, in her comments, trying to talk about shit. And she was just like, y'all need to stop talking because I'm going to expose him even more. This is what she said. You bitches really about to ruin this man's whole fucking career? Talking about shit that he tells you that is a goddamn lie? Trying to defend somebody who be gassing y'all and fronting? You better delete your shit right now. He about to call you. Get that shit off the internet or else I'm about to fucking drop a motherfucking bomb. I promise you that. If you really give a fuck about this man, you better get on there and delete that shit stat. Now, I think all this shit is crazy. That's why I called it Christmas mayhem. Like, it's just Christmas chaos. I think all this shit is crazy, but the crazy, one of the crazy things to me as well is just like, Iggy, I know that Blackstand 
is hurting your throat. I know, just let it go. Just let it go. Just <laughs> trying to defend somebody who be gassing y'all in fronting. It's, it's okay, just <laughs> use Merriam-Webster. Use Merriam-Webster, Iggy, and do not use Urban Dictionary. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> A lot of people were like coming for Iggy and they were just like, girl, you you in this, like I said, you in this black sand, you in this, you you trying to do black ass cosplay. And somebody was like, now you dealing with Playboy Cardi, you in the hood now, baby. That's what they, <laughs> they said. They were dragging, but they were also getting on Carti's ass because they were like, other Christmases, this is what was going on. Y'all was gifting each other Lambo gifts and you know, see what he said, she treat me like a bad bitch. They were like, what happened now? And then someone else tweeted and they were just like, this is Uzi and Cardi uh, <laughs> when Iggy was trying to get uh, Cardi to go see his his child. It's a mess, it's a mess. So if you're wondering why Iggy and Carti were in the news, that's what's been going on. Every time these stories happen, especially when someone has an album that's, that has come out or is coming out, I always wonder how much of it is actually real. You know, you because I don't put anything past these celebrities. So yeah, either way, if this is some big, you know, PR stunt or whatever, so <laughs> it definitely worked because motherfuckers is talking. Really quickly, and I know that I always, I, it seems like every video I choose one husband to talk about, and in, in this video, it is one hub. I just want to let him know that I definitely got in the Christmas spirit after seeing these. I just want to tell him really quick, we're not going to talk about him for too long, but I just want to say real quick, I don't know what's going on with these thighs, but I just, I know that I want my neck to be placed within them. I want it to be, it's giving very much, you know how people put you in a, a headlock? Put me in a, uh, put me in a leg lock, put me in a ch choke hole with those thighs. It don't make no sense. And then these other pictures, literally following one hole on Instagram has been the best decision that I've ever made. And as much as I thirst over his ass, I'm just like, a lot of you people who get, like these muscle motherfuckers, these people who be in the gym all the time, y'all have some stamina, y'all have some discipline. I'm not doing that shit. I'm not doing this shit. I'm telling you, I will go skating, I'll dance around, uh, maybe at a club when Corona ain't knocking on people's lungs. Like, you know what I mean? I will even, if worse comes to worse, I'll take my ass on somebody's treadmill. You know what I mean? I'll do some cardio. Like, that's the type of exercise I feel like my soul and my spirit can handle. Y'all be in there like lifting tow trucks to shit and I, I, you know what I mean? Punching fire hydrants. I'm really good. <laughs> I'm good. So let's get to some nerdy things real quick. Uh, today, I think would have been Stan Lee's 98th birthday. Um, happy birthday to that king. Okay, happy birthday to somebody who established Marvel, one of the most sick, you heard what I'm saying? Marvel, uh, one of the most sickening franchises to every motherfucking to it, period, period. And since we already got that out the way, let's talk about DC, Wonder Woman 1984. I am not going to give too many spoilers. If you don't wanna hear anything about it, go ahead, skip ahead a couple minutes. But I wanted to bring it up real quick because there have been a lot of people talking about it. Uh, get it. There have been a lot of mixed, very mixed reviews. Some people are just like, yeah, I enjoyed it, it was really great. Some people are like, girl, this shit was the ho most horrible thing I've ever seen in my goddamn life. And I don't wanna say it's horrible, but I will say that it's definitely like a C, C plus movie. I wanted the plot to be stronger. It's just some of the things didn't make any goddamn sense. I was like, what's going on with Cheetah's two part wish? Gal's acting range or lack thereof, no shade, really showed because of the lack of action. I'm just like, I don't understand why people they, like, okay, I get, you You know, because 2020 has been so garbage, you want to have a real hopeful, wonderful, peaceful, inspirational message. But girl, it's Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, especially in the comics and the, um, and the, the animated stuff, Wonder Woman is fun. She's nice. She's, she's considerate. She's, you know, honorable. But she will still beat your ass. <laughs> like... She'll do, what you mean? Like, she's like, oh my gosh, Cheetah, I'm gonna give you one more chance, please don't do it. She's not fucking Clark Kent, bitch. She's, she's gonna beat your ass, she's a warrior. I remember when Zod was dragging Clark Kent and Man of Steel, he's like, bitch, where did you train on a farm? Wonder Woman didn't train on no goddamn farm. She trained on Themyscira hole. She's an Amazon bitch. Like, why is her first scene beating hoes up in the mall? I hated it. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. But I will say that I think they should give this another chance. I think also uh, they did greenlight Wonder Woman 3 just because the first Wonder Woman literally brought hope back 
to, to DC. So so it's just like, let's just finish this trilogy and, and let it go. I think that DC need to start all the fuck over. No shade. Uh, but there are certain scenes I really enjoyed, and I won't give them away because uh, some of them were very key scenes. I think Kristen did really well, as well as Pedro. Like, they did, they did really well with what they were given. But when I watch a superhero movie, I don't want them singing Kumbaya. I don't want, like, 10 hours of... It's like rom-com type of tease. I think they tried to deal with too many things at the same time. Max Lord, you had Steve, and then you had Cheetah. I think it was just too much all at the same time. So yeah, those are my thoughts. I would like to know if y'all watched it, let me know what you think. <laughs> But I was, the, I, the first movie, the first Wonder Woman for me is still the best of them. Moving into what has been going on with politics and stimulus check and all that shit, as we know, this whole uh, coronavirus financial help and shit has been tied to funding the government. So people were just like, girl, is Trump, Trump really not gonna sign this shit? Like, Trump not gonna sign this shit? And is the government gonna shut down in the middle of goddamn pandemic? But he recently just signed this shit into law. Um, let me see, this from CNBC, Trump signs off on a $600 stimulus checks, uh, but a vote on the 2000 direct payments is still happening. So they're saying that the House plans to vote on a measure to increase stimulus checks to $2,000 on Monday uh, today. And in a statement released by Trump on Sunday night, he said that the Senate would also start the process for a vote that increases checks to $2,000. And they said it remains to be seen whether lawmakers will agree to authorize larger checks, an effort that is unpopular among many Republican leaders. In a statement late Sunday, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell made no mention of plans to consider this legislation should the House pass it. So, you know, they, they're saying that the 600 checks will come through uh they're going they're seeing about the two thousand dollar ones the girls are not sure what's happening with that shit when you'll get the checks i don't know specifically but before trump started fucking with the legislation um and they kind of thought it was going to go through steve's at mnuchin asked he was saying that of course people who had done their taxes and are in the irs system are going to be first in line and he said like this was before trump was fucking with the shit and didn't want to sign shit uh, he said that people would get it within a matter of days. So just take that how you want it. If that is correct, and that's a big ass if, it's giving very much next week or so, you know sometime in goddamn January, early January maybe. So, but just don't take my word for that shit because we never know. <laughs> with these crazy ass politicians. Of course, all of this comes with a whole lot of stipulations. One thing that Trump has really been aiming for is section 230, and that's a piece of internet legislation. And in it, it says, no provider or user of an interactive computer service shall be treated as a publisher or speaker of any information provided by another information content provider. So basically, it's just like, whatever the fuck y'all post, on you know these social media sites the company cannot be held liable for that shit and of course trump is trying to get all that shit removed get all that shit out of there he really wants to take control over what people can and cannot say on the goddamn internet so he's just it's all of this shit all these checks all these uh, oh we want to help you but not really all that shit comes with a whole bunch of stipulations and uh i'm sure we're just getting to the surface level of this shit right now and lastly i wanted to talk just a little bit about what happened in nashville tennessee if you don't know what happened please look it up because youtube is really weird about talking about this type of shit so just i'm gonna try and discuss it in a way that's like okay <laughs> you know and that's why i said it would be it's much easier for me to go in depth uh, about these things on Patreon uh, during the podcast episode. So make sure you check it out and sign up. But it's just very, if you don't know, like I said, if you don't know what happened, go look this shit up. I think it's very annoying, but predictable that, you know, of course the president has not made no goddamn statement about what happened. Uh, I think it is also very predictable that these me like big media companies are not covering it in a way that I would expect it to be covered. Cause I, I didn't even know that this shit happened until I was, I, like scrolling doing research and I found it I was like why is this not bigger news and it's just for me and for many other people they can see why it's not bigger news it's just based off of the type of person the kind of person that did that did that act they would definitely not be hesitating to call that act what it really is 
if, if, if a different kind of person did it. I mean, there are already reports coming out saying that the reason why him and his RV trucked the ass to the, you know, AT&T in Nashville and set that whole thing ablaze is because, you know, conspiracy theories, his motherfucker was nervous about 5G or some shit. So we are ready just from that, the inkling that they gave us, we can already identify the type of person, like the type of things that he believed, the ideologies, the conspiracy theories, we can already just come to our own conclusions. Like, really? And and add on top of that, the, the president's silence about this shit, we already know what the T is. So I just find that interesting. I'm gonna talk about it more on patreon.com slash Adrian Expression. Uh, but I just wanted to mention that because everyone was like, damn, bitch, we, this is a country to go act like Nashville it ain't have nothing to see here. What the fuck are you talking about? 41 buildings were, were affected by the blast. Like, it's just, uh, anyway, I hate this year. I, like, this year was so garbage. It's, it's not even done yet. So, like, I can only imagine what else is about to be happening. He, the motherfucker did that shit on Christmas Day. Like, get me, get, when I say get me off the planet, I really mean that shit. I want to be transported. I want to experience a flying saucer just vacuuming my ass up and taking me to, to Andromeda. Uh, get me out of here, okay? And on that note, thank y'all so much for watching. Please make sure to stay safe. Uh, during all this craziness. I love y'all so much and make sure that you have a good goddamn evening. Gay money, gay money, make money. Comedians because their bank accounts all funny. Salivating because my fat ass look yummy. Real niggas better pay me if they want to love me. You want to fuck? Give me keys to your truck. Broke niggas get flushed because they shit out of luck. Looking bummy, bummy, bummy. Could never be above me. Run me, run me, run me. My money, money.